Hi everyone, it's Steph, and I wanna to talk today about making zero clearance inserts. So this is my table saw. Uh, sorry about my mess, I'm working in my basement. It's unfinished, it's, you know, whatever. It's what we've got. Uh, it's my very first table saw, and it works pretty great. It's an older model Makita. Specifically, it's the 2708. Uh, and I love a lot of things about it. It's uh, what's called a contractor saw in that it's smaller but it's fit in this great big frame, which right now is covered with crap, but I promise you it's actually pretty great. There's a bigger outfeed table that would attach onto it if I was using it in a larger space. Uh, and it has a space to mount a router, which I have not done yet, but I do intend to. And one of the greatest things about it is I got it used on Facebook Marketplace for a really great deal. Uh, so yeah, pretty great but it does have some negatives. For one, the miter slots, that's a slot here and here, are narrower than usual. Um, they're like, they're narrower than usual. I forget exactly the measurements, but it means that you can't use most like store-bought jigs, but that's fine, you can make your own. Uh, and it has, what I believe is the worst, it has this terrible, throat plate. For one, it's just quite flimsy um, and thin. And second, you have to put the blade in, in a very weird way that ends up, it, it just doesn't work very well. Um, it's thin, flimsy, and there's a very large cutoff area. So this big old gap where if I was cutting something small, stuff could fall through. So just not ideal. So what I've been working on as I, oh yes, sorry. And the last negative about this saw is that uh, a lot of the parts are discontinued, including the blade guard. The blade guard's like a cover that comes up over the blade while you're working. And it both protects you from like anything that might fly up accidentally. And it also serves as a, what's called a riving blade. And that means the blade's spinning, you push your piece through, it gets through to the other side and there's a little blade to hold the two parts of the wood apart, which is important because, uh, especially when you're working with hardwood that might have some pressure stored in it, if you're pushing it through and then it starts to pinch your blade, you are not stronger than your table saw. Um, it will do what's called, um, it'll bind the blade and give you what's called kickback. So in other words, it'll take your piece and hurl it uh, across against the wall or whatever. This is one reason you should always stand to the side of your piece when you're working on a table saw. So anyway, no, no you know, safety precautions <laughs> and this insert's just kind of crappy. So I've been working on creating zero clearance inserts. This is my first one. It's a little bit wonky, you can see, but that's just, you know, uh, learning, learning as I go, and I thinned it out a little too much here. Um, I created this one to work with my narrow kerf blades. Uh, in other words, this blade is a little bit narrower than standard, so it cuts away a little bit less of the blade. Uh, it's nice for smaller size table saws because the blade, it, it, it just will do a little, it makes it work a little better. Um, when your motor's not quite as powerful, but you still really want to get through some stuff. Smaller blade, it's great. Uh, anyways, zero clearance inserts. So instead of this old thing, I can drop this in very carefully and tighten my screws down and uh, it's perfect. Little pieces won't fall in. Um, and yeah, it's just awesome very finicky so I hope you use help to get it back out. So as I mentioned this is my narrow kerf insert. Not all of my saw blades are narrow kerf though so I'll eventually I'll want to make one that I can use with standard kerf blades uh, like my rip saw blade, my ripping blade, and I'll also want to make some that I can use for dado cuts. Uh, a dado cut is one that doesn't go all the way through the piece but rather creates a small groove on the underside. This is often used for holding a drawer base or like a cabinet front 
Um, it'll make sense once you see it, like you'll, you'll know exactly what I mean. So it's called a nom through cut. Um, so I've already cut a number of blanks. This is just out of MDF. You can choose one that doesn't have like, this is just from some scrap MDF. So some of these are a little junked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this block into a one quarter inch dado blade zero clearance insert. So one thing you'll see about my saw opening is it's not exactly rectangular. You have this small ledge and then it goes in a little bit. Same on the other side. Luckily through lots of trial and error, I was able to figure out that exact notch in uh, on my first one, which as I mentioned is pretty wonky. So I can go ahead and just repeat my work, match it up here and cut it. So you can cut your notches out with whatever saw you like. Um, if you have a bandsaw, that's probably the easiest one to use. I don't have a bandsaw yet. You can buy me a bandsaw if you want. I want one of the Rikon models, preferably one of the bench top ones because I have a small workspace. Um, you could use a jigsaw, which I have a jigsaw, but it's just, it's, they're such small cuts. It seems like a pain to like get it out and clean it up after. Uh, I'm just gonna use a handsaw because it's really easy to use. This is called a hold fast. It holds things fast. This is my handsaw. an awkward angle I'm gonna mark it on this is an awkward angle for me to cut so I'm gonna mark it on the other side I'll be right back there much better oh sorry the lighting's a little funky in here you probably can't see that nice all right so let's see how it fits in here is good uh, it feels solid enough in here I'm feeling pretty good about it uh, whenever you're messing about with your saw you obviously should have it off but make sure it's unplugged too uh, it would just be awful if like I bumped the on switch with my knee when my hand was in there no 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 unplug your saw whenever you're changing your blade or doing anything at all other than being about ready to use it. I mean, like, don't even plug it in until you have like your goggles and stuff on, your, your eye protection, your hearing protection. Just make it your last step. And your first step after you're done with your series of cuts is unplug it. So now I'm gonna change my blade out to get ready to do this, try out this dado cut. This is my dado set. Um, most table saws will take an eight inch dado set. Definitely check your manual. Mine being a little undersized, I don't remember if I mentioned that. It, its maximum normal blade is eight and a quarter and its maximum dado size is six inch. I don't know exactly how that all works out, but I know that this is the dado set I needed. I'm really excited. This is the first time I'm gonna be trying it out. Uh, I'm excited. All right, gonna change out my blade. So this wrench was holding this part, while this smaller wrench was loosening this nut. 
Okay, Dado Blade, how do I set you up? Oh great, a quarter inch is actually really easy. I checked my little reference that uh, all your Dado Blades should come with, and a quarter inch it tells me to use the main blades A and B, and none of the chippers, and none of the shims. It'll make sense if you have a Dado set, don't worry about it until then. These are the main blades, these are the chippers, and I assume the spacers are, the shims are in there somewhere. Anyway, I'm gonna get it set up now. Your blade's gonna be turning towards you, so just make sure it's facing the right way. to over tighten it but you want to make sure it's snug that it like resists you know so when I made my thin kerf insert uh, my thin kerf zero clearance insert I had to do this real awkward thing at this point where I balanced this on top I like put a motherboard on it I clamped it to either end and then I slowly raised the blade while it was on so it would cut through and the reason is the table saw, the eight and a quarter inch blade comes basically all the way up to here. So if I had tried to sink it down, it would have like wobbled all over the place. Um, anyway, this guy, because the dado blade is a little bit smaller, it sits, it sits in lower than this whole insert. So that's a huge relief. Basically that means I can deal with putting this little ledge on for it to sit here. And I can deal with drilling out this hole and getting it all anchored before I have to worry about like anything else. Awesome. So again, those steps are going to be, I need to route in this little edge. Ooh, it's a little messy, I need to sand that up. I need to put in these little holes to, uh, for it to sit on this, these screw holders. Um, there's a slight ledge here that I don't think you can see that I'll end up hand chiseling out. Um, and then I'll carefully sink this other side so that the screw has something to sit in. And I'll very carefully not sink it so hard that I end up kind of breaking through. So the best way to route in that edge would be to use a router. Um, I do have a router I just got. I uh, haven't set it up yet though, uh, and like built the fence and everything that it needs. So I'm gonna use my uh, Dremel. So you might have a Dremel tool. Oh, sorry, I'm a little cramped in here. Um, this is the Dremel router to a table attachment. I forget the number of it, maybe 231? If you search for like, Dremel routing and shaping table, you'll find it. Basically, it just holds uh, the Dremel in here and lets it act like a, like a router. The Dremel's not super strong like a router, so you wanna make sure that you're only taking a little bit of it at a time. And actually, that's a good rule of thumb for using a full-sized router too. So let me back it back down. Nice and low. Otherwise you get magic smoke, you don't want that. That might be a good starter, okay. A little up, okay. Tighten you. Oof, MDF dust. All right, got your eye protection. Hearing protection. And of course, dust protection, very important. 
All right. Now we don't need to route this edge. We only need to route these three and only up to here. So let's do it. All right, it's a little chipped because my blade's not super sharp. I'll have to do something about that at some point, but I've got the fur, I've got like a quarter of what I need. So I'll just keep going with this. All right, there's a little more. Gonna keep going. A little more. Almost. So close. Okay, I think I got it. Uh, if not, we're at least close enough that we can start looking at the other step, or the next step. Okay, so I just marked the circle by overlaying my crappy insert piece and just marking through it. So now we'll just drill this out as fine as possible. So tip, when you're drilling a hole that's going to go all the way through something, use a little piece of scrap as a backer board that way when your drill goes through the other side, it comes out nice and clean. Otherwise it can just kind of tear it out and leave you a really messy edge, which will make things harder for you later. So let's do it. Okay, next I'm going to be making these hollowed out uh, circles, which will rest on the, um, the little bit that sticks out that the screw screws into. Uh, this is called a Forstner bit. It's a type of bit that makes a flat hole. So that's perfectly what I want right now. Let's do it. Okay, at this point I'm getting close. Uh, I just kind of measured here, measured here. I've still got a little ways to go, but I'm gonna call that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that and then adjust as I need to. I'm really nervous about going all the way through. Okay, these are both pretty close at this point, so I'm gonna move on to the next step and I'll probably end up coming back and drilling them a little bit further, but better to not drill far enough and then being able to come back and clean it up, then drill too far and lose all the work I've done so far. Great news, I just fucked this up. Um, I should have been drilling through from the other side. Looking at this, once you compare these two, you can see, yeah, no, I just completely ruined this one. All right, back to the drawing board. Maybe this next time I won't fuck it up. Okay, let's never speak of this again. 
Let's drill these. All right, next we're gonna use a chisel and chisel out, uh, just chisel this straight and then chisel a little ramp right here. You should always have a chisel set that's just like basic starter tool. Got it most of the way, and then I can literally just, because MDF is, it's pretty easy to chisel. Nice. Now I just want to create a little, a little ramp, carefully. Try it on the other side. All right, let's see how my guessing did. I'm expecting this not to fit in smoothly and trip, have to chip away a little bit. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna to wanna to shave off a little bit here because it's not quite going down. Block of wood, please examine. It's dropping in nicely here, but it's still a little snug here, so I might just wanna go and loosen that up. Okay, a little more sanding. All right, nice. So it's smooth around here and it's lifted a little here. So I think that means, I think that means that I need to route this edge just a little higher. Well, I'm gonna start by sanding it because it looks like it's a little rough. All right, it's feeling pretty solid in there. It's not going down quite there, a little more. It's worth it to get it just right. <clears throat> All right, it's in and very happy there. <clears throat> just wants to be a little more level here. Oh my gosh, this is like the best one yet. Oh, I feel really good about this. I'm really happy with how smooth it feels. Let me do a little test. Nice. Nice. Okay, so the last thing to do is to drill out where the screw heads are gonna sink into. Oh, and like drill 
the main, the, the screws are uh, thicker than this. These are the screws. They're pretty awkward. So I need to drill a main hole that's that thick and a top hole that's that thick. I think I'll do the top first with a Forstner bit and then I'll carefully drill out the middle. I'm a little nervous. Oh my God, I did it. I thought I was gonna blow through. But look, it's flat, it's smooth. It's a little messy. It's so beautiful. So the next thing that you do is you um, make the hole. So I've got my quarter inch dado blade in there. This is feeling nice and smooth. Uh, I'm gonna put on all my safety equipment, of course. Then I'll plug in the saw, turn on the blade, and slowly rise it through the table. Nothing could be easier, right? plugging saw first before I remove any safety equipment. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? I haven't. Thanks for asking though. Everything's so dusty in here. <laughs> quarter inch. It's a quarter inch dado. Zero service insert. Ah! Oh man, that feels good. Uh, my shop, my well, the dust part of my shop is really messy now. So before I do any projects tomorrow, I'm gonna have to do some major cleanup in here. Um, I kind of let things get messy while I was making this. But now that I have this zero clearance insert, I'll be able to actually get started on my next project, which is a, uh, a jewelry cabinet. And I am so excited. Ah! Okay, time to go to bed, I guess. How can I go to bed when I'm this excited? I want to make cabinets all night. Pippin, do you want to hear about my zero clearance insert? No. Pippin, should I make cabinets all night? No, I need belly rubs. Well, you heard Pippin. He needs belly rubs. So thanks for watching my video.